precisely there. Um, <clears throat> again, it is it is it is quite it is quite common, you know, when you come to realize in part what your problem is, then you quickly say, "So what do I do?" Now. Up to this point, you've understood a very minuscule part of how colonial your life is. You know, um, so I do not, excuse me, I do not think that, you know, we should jump into what do we do. First, we must understand, you know, we must try and understand, you know, uh, what is the nature of the problem? What is the complexity of the problem? You know, as, as Ngugi says, we must not look at where we tripped and fell. We must look at where the rain began to beat us. You know, where did it all begin? And once we have a much more, you know, complete understanding of what's the nature of the problem, I think it is only then that we would be able to confront it, you know, in a much more productive way. Because, you know, when you proceed in a piecemeal fashion and say that, you know, at least I must do one thing, Remember that the dialectic of, you know, the sociological schema or the white nature of the world is that it's not static, it's not waiting, it's not sitting. It's also adapting itself to your modes of resistance. You know, it, it's also, you know, recreating itself in ways that are much more acceptable, you know, in ways that are much more, you know, salient than previously. Now it no longer has the benefit of force you know, of colonialism. So it has to find other ways, you know, of functioning. So we must understand it first, you know, how does it function? What is the technology of this, you know, oppression? So that we may then be able, you know, to, 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 to confront it, you know, in a much more meaningful way, such that we do not, you know, undo one thing today it adapts itself, then the following day we are back at it. You know, we must be able to do the kind of change that we must envision is a kind of change that turns us away from this white life completely such that there is no return, you know, to it. And to be able to do that, you know, you need to first understand it in its totality. Now, of course, I do, you know, having spent considerable number of years thinking about, you know, you know, the coloniality of life. I mean, I can tell you a few things that I know that, you know, we could do that would turn us completely away. But, you know, I don't think that it is, it is, it is a project that lends itself to such prescriptive thought. You know, it is a project that, you know, has to function via a different mode. You know, it's not like, you know, the typical, you know, projects that you are made to write in the university that you must end with recommendations. You know, um, here we're not looking for recommendations, we're looking for an understanding so that, you know, we can then engage in a project where we have, you know, a proper understanding of what is the nature of the enemy, you know, what is the nature of, you know, uh, the thesis so that when we, when we confront it, we'll be able to transcend it. Because the other, the other challenge is that if we... If we want to, if we want to face off, you know, um, the challenge of the coloniality of life by focusing on, you know, the specifics, soon um, we, we are going to bring the wrong resources, you know, to confront um, a wrong, a wrong uh, enemy. You know, we are going to be faced with a rugby team and bring a football team, you know, to to to, you know, confront it, and therefore would not have the desired result. You know, there is somewhere. You know, in the text where Chaban Manganyi, for instance, says that if then we habit the world differently from white people, should change mean the same thing for us and for white people? It cannot mean the same thing. So, here is the first challenge. If change, you know, is not going to mean the same thing for us, as it would have, or rather it should have the different meaning for us as it would have to white or white people, is there a possibility then of struggling with white people? I don't believe so. So you see, we must understand all of these things in their totality because um, the complexity of this is such that we must 
we must, you know, have the answers, you know, to the questions that are going to arise, you know, uh, because, you know, um, you know, I teach a first year course, um, Introduction to Political Science. And one of the, you know, um, one of the things I teach students is race and racism. And I tell them that there is no possibility of friendship between you as a black person and a white person. There is, there is just no possibility of you calling a white person your friend, you know. Friendship can only be between two human beings. The humanity of a white person presupposes you are not being human. You know, so you cannot, you cannot, when you stand, you know, as a black person, you know, in relation to a white person, your humanity is negated. So you cannot possibly claim to have friendship, you know, in that kind of a situation. Um, and it piques me that it is white people who, when I teach that part of the course, who insist that, no, we can be friends with, with black people. Um, and so the point I, I'm raising this, you know, I'm sorry, I do not go off that route too much. Uh, <laughs> the point I'm raising this is because we must first understand the nature of our problem so that we we'll then be able, you know, to confront it with the right resources. Because otherwise, you know, if we are piecemeal, I understand the, the desire for, for something to change now, but, you know, um, I think that we need a much more complete and holistic change in order to be able, you know, to confront... Um, now, is there a possibility of reconciling the black people's, you know, individual schema and the sociological schema? Again, the point here is the sociological schema is reflective of the values that white people have given to the world. You know, it's the, basically the sociological schema is everything that white people have given us as modes of valuation in the world. What is desirable aesthetically, what is desirable morally, what is desirable in terms of knowledge, what is desirable in terms of everything. That's what the sociological schema basically is. And of course, they've given that to us in relation to a black person lacking in all of these things, lacking in a sense of morality, lacking in a sense of aesthetics, and lacking in a sense of everything. Now, the question then would be, is that the kind of society we want to build or that we want to envision, where we have you know, a different sociological schema? Or maybe the, you know, the, the, the project for us is to design a completely different world other than that world, you know, where you have an individual schema you know, and a sociological schema that you know, figures you in a certain way. I think there is a possibility of a completely different world because, you see, the possibility of that sociological schema and individual schema is founded on something else. It's founded on the preeminence or the possibility of a distinction between the I and the community or the I and the collective, you know. We can imagine different kinds of societies that do not individualize or do not individuate, you know, our modes of being in the world, where, you know, you do not need an individuated sense for being in the world. You know, um, in such situations, then, you do not need a distinction between an individual schema and a sociological schema. You can create a world, you know, where, you know, your individuated self does not exist, but where you exist, you know, in a community. Um, or you can imagine a different kind of society altogether. Because to want to say that maybe what we need to do is to fix what is wrong with this Western society, it means that we're giving up the possibility of imagining, you know, a completely different kind of society. It would be more or less like what we are called upon to do in the Western Academy to say, bring your own knowledge, bring your sociologists, you know, bring your philosophers, would we'll integrate them into this structure. We should allow ourselves the possibility of imagining a different kind of society where people are not individualized, where people do not come to acquire an individuated sense of self, where people, you know, um, exist entirely, 
you know, within a community without thinking that they ought to have an individuated or individualized form of, you know, being in the world. Um, now that that standoff, you know, um, what is what is what is the teleological conclusion? You know what is teleology? Teleology is is basically when you can imagine the end, the resolution. You know, it means that you know there is there is um, a teleolo when you have a, sen a teleological sense of history. It's like you can stand today in 2017 and say what life will be like in, you know, 20, you know, 50. That's a teleological sense of history. You can, you know, tell how life will unfold and it would be, you know, in. Now, when you do that, you close off other possibilities because you are saying that by any means necessary, or rather it's an inevitability that this is where we are going to arrive at. What you do you close off other possibilities of people not moving to a teleological stage, you know, uh, which is somewhere. You close off the possibility of people moving in different directions. Or even turning their back on that way and moving in a completely different direction. Um, so we should allow, you know, to borrow um, from, from, you know, that language of old. We should keep, you know, the dialectic open. You know, we should allow, you know, different possibilities emerging rather than think that there is a way in which that, you know, um, which life should, should, should proceed and resolve itself. Uh, okay. I'll take